Hello, in this video I'm going to be giving you some quick tips on how to diagnose and potentially resolve your E919 error code on a Samsung unit. So E919 is essentially an error code that is described as a Legionella failure and essentially what that means is during the unit's last Legionella cycle it didn't reach the desired temperature we wanted in the time frame that we've set that to achieve it in. Um, so the very first thing that I would check is um, that the Legionella target temperature is not set too high for what your immersion heater can achieve. And to do that you're going to need to get into the service menu on the controller by holding the up and down arrows at the same time for 6 seconds. Typing in the service mode passcode 0202. Scrolling all the way down to field setting value. Going into the 30 star section for DHW, going into the 304 star section for disinfection. Um, <clears throat> 3042 is the day of the week we want it to happen. Um, 3043 is the hour of the day that it starts at, so if it's on 3 hour, it's going to start at 3 a.m. And then 3044 is target temp. If your immersion heater can only get your cylinder to, you know, 60, 65 degrees, probably doesn't make sense to have this set on 70. So make sure this is set sort of around the 60 degree mark if that's all your immersion heater can do. Then there's also a max time. So this one is set to four hours. There is no reason why an immersion heater should not be able to lift the temperature of a cylinder by about 10 degrees in about four hours. But if you've got a particularly large cylinder, you might need to extend this out another couple of hours, but the maximum is essentially eight hours. So if you leave it on eight hours, that immersion heater is gonna run for eight hours during the Legionella cycle before it gives up. If it doesn't reach temperature, that is, of course. Um, if the settings are all correct, what I would then do is uh, pop the unit into self-test mode. I would then uh, manually turn on the immersion heater or booster heater. And then I would make sure that my multimeter is set to voltage on AC. And I'm just gonna double check that our immersion heater is getting 230 volts which as you can see, we are getting 244 here. So we know there's power on the immersion. If there's no power on the immersion, I would check the wiring up to the MIM control box. It should be wired in just here next to the power in terminals. If you're getting no voltage here, it would probably make sense to check that you're getting voltage here. If you aren't getting voltage here, then that would probably indicate that the relay is damaged on the PCB and you'll have to replace the, um, the MIM control box PCB, especially if you're not getting any voltage here with the um, booster heater on, on in the self-test mode. So, if we've done that and we've got power onto our immersion heater, Probably worth checking that it's actually pulling the current that we're expecting. So on my multimeter, I'll just move it to the, the 20 amp setting and then I'll just pop my clamp around one of the, either the live or the neutral. As we can see here right now, my immersion heater is pulling zero amps, which would probably now be a good time to um, check that the thermostat on our immersion heater is set to the right temperature. Most of them don't have temperature dials, so it probably makes sense just to set this to max. As I move this up, you'll hear a click. And as you can see now, my immersion heater is now pulling some current. It's pulling 12.4 amps, which is about the range of what I would expect. Then what I would do <clears throat> is I would leave that for probably an hour, maybe an hour and a half. And I would just see at what point is that stack cutting off. And then when the amperage drops to zero, I would then pop back up to my self test mode display here and see what the tank temp is. If the tank temp is sort of below 60, then obviously then it would be quite clear that either the immersion heater thermostat is cutting out too early and that might need to be replaced, or it might be that our tank uh, temperature sensor is not reading the right temperature. 
So if you, if you could compare this temperature with another temperature reading you've got, what you should find is the temperature here should maybe only be a couple degrees less than the temperature coming off the top of the cylinder. Um, <clears throat> and also the, the tank sensor should be placed higher than the immersion heater in the cylinder. Now that's quite easy in most cylinders because the immersion heater is usually at the bottom, but on this cylinder is about halfway up. So if I had this, uh, if I had this probe in this temperature sensor pocket, then it's not going to be picking up that heat from the immersion heater. So um, yeah, always make sure that the tank uh, probe is higher than the immersion heater in the cylinder. As you can see, this one is ever so slightly. And then just check that you know your immersion heat is actually getting power. Check that it's pulling the current until you get all the way up to the temperature you require. But what you'll probably find is it's either the fact that the immersion heater thermostat is cutting out too early or this temperature probe is either not pushed in the pocket all the way or it's not above the immersion heater or something silly like that. So fairly easy one to solve.